Hey guys, thanks for joining my video. This is the Dream Flight Label. Um, this is kind of just an overview. It's not really an instructional how-to, but uh, I know when I watch these videos, I want to see uh, kind of how things go together. I'm very curious like that, so I decided, hey, I'll go ahead and make a video about the Label. There's my little sticker that uh, reminds me of my wife. She's always watching over me. So. Uh, here we go, we're going into the time lapse. Uh, first thing that you do is you uh, organize the um, heads of your servos. And at this point, I've actually already um, centered all my servos with my servo tester. So you're gonna make uh, two servo heads uh, that have two holes in it and two servo heads that have a single hole. And I believe the measurement is uh, 10 millimeters and seven millimeters. These are not the standard uh, servos that come they come from um, Dream Flight, so I had to measure them. You'll see me pulling out the caliper at a certain point here. Things go pretty fast in this video. Um, I'm jamming about, you know, uh, two hours of uh, work into about uh, 12, 13 minutes here, depending on how long this video goes. So here I am measuring, just making sure that the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, or the hole-to-hole -hole, uh, is the exact right measurement. I'm clipping off the excess. It is really nice that LaBelle tells you exactly how um, the distance between holes that you want to go because each servo horn is always different, which is kind of funny. I wish the manufacturers would make them all standard. That would be nice. Uh, here I'm away from the desk for a second. I'm just rounding off the top of the heads uh, so it doesn't have little sharp ends on it because I like them to look nice. All right, and I'm basically I'm holding the two servos in the orientation that they have it in the photo there in the very well constructed instruction manual. And I just adjusted my lights so I have a little bit more lights on the subject here. Uh, and uh, this is the rudder and aileron, rudder and uh, elevator, excuse me. Hopefully at the end of this video, I will um, put a little clip of me uh, launching it uh, for the first time. It um, My first launch uh, on the slope, I uh, got a good 20 minute flight and I only landed because I had to answer my telephone. All right, here we go. Uh, so I'm just screw putting the screws in the top of the servos, nothing big here. And we are moving on to the wings. Um, we are cutting every 20 millimeters or so through just to free up the hinge and bending the hinge back and forth. Very, very easy step. Everything on, there's nothing really hard on the build. Um, it's just time, it is time consuming though. Uh, as you're building, you get to admire um, the good quality of foam and the precision and how everything goes together. I was quite impressed. I, I've built a lot of kits and this is a very, very well-made kit and it also uh, reflects it in its flight as well. So we are getting ready to uh, put the two, those things, what are those called? The, the wing joiners um, together and it holds the wings at their perfect um, dihedral. Uh, basically you add your instant glue and put the tape over it onto one side and then you put glue on the foam of the other side and join the whole thing together. You want to make sure you don't move it as your glue sets. And we're going to move on to the top of the wing here. Nope, not yet. <laughs> Jumped ahead, sorry about that. And I think I'm test fitting the top piece, the plastic piece that gets glued in as well. And I just glued it in. I do like to use the uh, kicker. I don't know if that's the best way of doing it. My preferred gluing method actually is uh, foam tack, but it takes a little bit longer. And I I wanted to maiden my airplane so badly that I just uh, I went ahead and used CA and kicker um, all the way through. And here you see me um, cutting around the servo horn. Uh, it uh, it wasn't perfectly cut out for this type of servo, so I had to modify the foam a little bit. And I'm pulling the leads through and the control horns as well. So, if you guys haven't used these uh, little cl clasping um, clevises, uh, they're actually very cleverly made. Um, it kind of wraps around the rod, the control rod, and pinches together. 
and once you get everything set and, and um, you get the uh, your throws uh, correctly on your wing you can actually put a little dab of, uh, of CA on there which helps to keep um, your your clevis is uh, from shifting in a, in a crash or whatever. Um, so we are onto the body and the fuselage. I'm test fitting the servos. Uh, it's nice. Uh, underneath the ends, ends of the servos, it leaves a little pocket for the wires to come out, which is a really nice touch. I always like to put in servos with hot glue because if you ever need to take them out, you can just uh, touch a little bit of denatured alcohol to it and it'll actually release the glue and it comes right out very easily. Rather than putting CA in there, CA would probably rip some of the foam out as you um, uh, remove the servo. So, I believe we are going on to the long uh, control uh, surfaces here, um, the rods. Uh, and the, By the way, these rods are all made of carbon fiber, which is really nice. It makes them um, move very easily and they're very light as well. Putting on the um, elevator here, or the uh, horizontal stabilizer is extremely easy. Just line, line up the notches and put the short bolt, that one there, uh, the shortest one that comes in the kit, in. And just to let you know, you have three uh, nylon bolts that come with this kit, and they're all different sizes. There's one, I think that's a 6 millimeter. Um, there is a 12 millimeter and a 15 millimeter. So uh, they all go into different parts of the wing and that tail. So keep in mind uh, with that. Because when I put the wings on, I uh, grabbed the wrong one for the wrong hole. So <laughs> Build's coming along very swimmingly here. Uh, this is probably the, the hardest part of the build is um, getting the horizontal, or excuse me, the rudder on exactly perfect um, without uh, getting it wrong. I'm using a angle of course uh, to make sure that the it is perfectly perpendicular to the horizontal stabilizer. So basically I'm test fitting it here. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in it in a second and this is a like a foam safe glue that I'm using, um, a CA. And uh, it's nice because I can just spritz it with um, a kicker after I get it in perfect place because it doesn't set up super fast. There I am. I'm going to use my, uh, my right angle there. Spritz it a little bit. And uh, they do recommend after you are glued in to put a little piece of tape over the top of it, but you do that after you um, put your control surfaces in. Uh, feeding the control line in, and I believe this is for the, um, yeah, I'm not sure which one, what I'm doing there, sorry. What you have to do is pop off the, the servo head um, and put feed the uh, servo arm through the Z-bend in the front of the canopy there, <clears throat> and then replace your servo horn. I think I do that with both. I'm just tightening up the little screw that uh, pinches the clevis together. And there's always a little bit of flash on the uh, edges of the foam um, from Dreamflight, so you just take a razor blade and you just cut that little flash off. That happens on the wings. You, you need to watch that um, because it's a little shelf, um, kind of a little pin, uh, not a pin, but it comes to a point, so it, it, it's something that you want to take off, definitely. There's the lovely back of my head. And yes, I do have to read the instructions from time to time. What I'm noticing, I think, is uh, on my elevator, um, as the rod gets pulled, it tends to hit the little plastic area um, that it, it's kind of enclosed by. So I took it and I um, ground off the very tip of the uh, clevis um, screw that screws through very far so that's all I did right there 
Okay, here I think I'm programming a new model. Um, I'm going to bind up my receiver to my Spectrum DX8. My trusty, trusty Spectrum DX8. I've never had a problem with uh, control failures, anything like that. I've had some mysterious things happen, but I can't pin it directly on the radio. So, And it's been very few and far between. <laughs> All right, here I think I'm trying to put the wings on, and I'm I'm trying to get my my servo extensions uh, into the pod there. The servo extension wires ended up being a lot thicker than the standard servo wires, so I'm kind of struggling with that. And I'm putting a little dabs of hot glue in there to keep the uh, the servo wires managed there. It, they do allow they do have a little cutout in the wing for your servo extension because they know, knew that you had to have one so all right there my wing is on I kind of did that off camera because it was off camera and I think binding up my receiver making sure all my control surfaces are reacting in the proper direction now after I did this build um, I actually programmed in flaperons because I am I set it up with flaperons so uh, when I had my three-way switch in the middle, it's just dead center where it should be, and um, I have it about a one to two millimeters up for the up switch and one to two millimeters down for the down switch, and I have also the elevator to re react in the same way. It's nice for if you need a little bit of a drag or um, if you need to speed up a little bit, so... All right. Uh, inserting the peg it goes in very easy I put a dab of hot uh, excuse me CA on there and wiped it off so I'm just trying to figure out how the heck am I gonna get this um, it's not even a very large receiver but um, it's the I think it's a six gram receiver from lemon R X yeah and I had to dig out the foam a little bit to get it to sit sideways uh, in that little pocket that you can see right there. Um, one thing you want to do is test fit the canopy to make sure everything sits flat and everything is clear. And I did need to cut away a little bit of the foam on the hatch as well. Uh, because uh, it, I think it was my elevator, and excuse me, my, my rudder servo was hitting some foam as it as it was swinging towards the front of the craft, so I had to remove a little bit of foam there. Um, not really sure what I'm doing here. I'm hot gluing something in. Nice when everything's off camera, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm still test fitting and, and removing um, styrofoam as needed. I like to call these foam airplanes are called flying flying beer coolers because uh, you know it's, it's it's just hilarious that we're flying uh, foam airplanes around. I think here I am uh, inserting some weights in the nose. Um, yeah, I, I actually had to put three weights, four weights in one underneath the battery pack and three off to the side. And you do have to recess them a little bit because they will prevent the canopy from f lying flat and flush like you want it to. Now my lovely desk is becoming a huge mess now. I don't know if you guys noticed that bit of foam at the top of the screen, but that is a nice uh, chunk of two-inch foam, but it's really great to have on your workbench because you can just stick your screwdrivers right in there multiple times. Holds all your... Um, tools really nicely and keeps them all organized which is nice. Now I have those wing strengthening stickers and I felt them and they were extremely extremely uh, heavy so um, I decided I opted to not uh, put those on my craft. I um, decided to laminate the first three inches of my wing just to give it some protection and also some stiffness uh, and I don't have any video of that right now but I will include that um, maybe on my maiden flight. Uh, not on my maiden flight, but on my subsequent flight. So, um, so you guys should see be seeing now some flight footage from my maiden. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully this video helped you out. And if it did, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.